Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to start a really cool journey with this Land Cruiser. So, we are going to look at installing a turbo kit. That's right, and with that turbo kit I'm going to install uh, a 3 inch exhaust kit and some gauges obviously to monitor how the turbo kit is performing. I'm going to walk you through that in three or four videos um, looking at each step along the way and I'm going to try and make them the best quality. I'm talking sound, video, and I'm going to talk you through the whole process and I'm going to make them really good quality videos because I found when I was looking at putting a kit in that there weren't a lot out there. So I'm going to help you out with that today guys um, and we're going to look at comparing before the kit, after the kit, um, and we're going to look at installing it, how it performs, all that, and I'm going to walk you through every step of the way. So let's get a little bit more specific. This is a HZJ 105 series Land Cruiser made in 1998. The engine I'm running is a 1HZ which came standard with the car. And yes, I've done a lot of research before, before even purchasing a turbo kit for this. There's so much controversy about whether it's safe or not to turbo the 1HZ. It's probably one of the engines you've got to be really careful about putting too much boost into. So I made sure to buy a turbo kit that was only going to put between 10 and 12 psi. Of course this can be adjusted uh, less or more depending on how it's running after it's been installed. The reason I wanted to take you for a drive today is because I want you to get a feel of how this car runs before I put the turbo kit in. So, the 1HZ, it's a beautiful, solid, reliable engine. Can't fault it. Apart from the fact that it is lazy. The 1HZ is a lazy engine. It's a truck engine, it may as well be a truck. Uh, it's beautiful, it's powerful, it's smooth, everything is mechanical. There is no ECUs in this vehicle. Um, but it is a little bit sluggish. So we're just going to go for a drive out to the bitumen. And we are going to get a feel for how this beauty accelerates. Pushing it fairly hard at the moment. Foot is flat at the moment. 60k an hour. Fourth gear accelerating. This is where it gets a little bit sluggish, right? 60k an hour. 80k an hour. 85 will go to fifth. My foot is flat. 90. 95. 100. All right. So there you go, it is sluggish, it's a little bit lazy, it's very reliable but it is a little bit lazy. So it'll be very interesting to compare that to when I put the turbo kit in. The kit I decided to go with is a JB turbo kit. I chose this kit because from the research I did, it seemed like a really high quality kit. It came with a CT26 turbocharger, which is fairly safe, um, it's not going to be putting a lot of boost into my engine um, and it's an entry level turbo which is exactly what I was looking for for this job.
All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to remove is your accelerator cable. This is pretty easy just to snap out of place and unscrew and push out the way. I like to screw the nut back up to where it was originally here so I know where to put it again when I'm reinstalling the cable. All right, so now it's the pretty simple case of removing the airbox lid, the airbox and all the piping to the crossover pipe. This will just be a few hose clamps and a few bolts securing the airbox to the engine bay. I have a hose clamp as well going back out to my snorkel piping. Pretty simple just to loosen that off and pull the airbox right out. After that, you can whip off your crossover pipe and that's the easy part done. Now when it comes to exhaust manifold bolts, I can almost promise you, you're going to have a pretty rough time. Here's me trying a thousand different ways to get these bolts off. Make sure that they are well lubricated with WD-40 or some CRC. Give them a knock to loosen the rust if need be, just be a bit careful. I found the best way to get a grip on these bolts was to actually knock a hex socket on with a hammer. Now chances are, if you just go ahead and loosen these, you're gonna snap the head off and you're gonna have a real headache. The best method I found here was once they're cracked, to loosen them a bit, tighten them a bit, loosen them a bit, tighten a bit, repeat until you've worked a bit of the rust off the thread and then go ahead and loosen the bolt out. There was one bolt that really didn't give up the fight. I tried welding at least three nuts onto this, but in the end, I just grinded it back because fact is, I'm not actually gonna put this manifold cover back on. The new JB manifold actually doesn't support a manifold cover anyway. The next step is gonna be taking the actual exhaust manifold off. Same deal as the cover. Sometimes you might find it's easiest to knock a socket onto this with a hammer and then break it with a breaker bar and loosen it with a socket wrench. Just be really careful here because if you strip a nut or snap a stud, it's stuck in your engine block and then you really do have a problem. This could take a while and when you're dealing with old exhaust bolts, yeah, they're going to take a bit of convincing to crack. If you were after a bit of an idea, this full turbo conversion probably took me a bit over three full days. Before you can remove the exhaust manifold, you're gonna to want to remove that first piece of exhaust pipe that exits the manifold. Lucky for me, I only just replaced these studs about 15,000 kilometers ago, but from memory, it was a real headache to get those off originally. It might require some heating and instant cooling uh, you'll need a lot of CRC and yeah, probably a hell of a lot of elbow grease to get them off. But if you're lucky like me and they've been replaced recently, you'll be fine. After the new manifold's in, it's time to plumb my oil intake. You can see here that I've put the T-piece in where the oil sender normally sits. For space reasons, I've decided to put my oil sender on top there and run the braided line straight out like so. Now for the scariest part. Um, this is Dad and I punching a hole in the sump with a big metal spear we found lying around. That's right, this is gonna be the oil return. Before bolting the turbo onto the bottom of the manifold, I think it is important to take a look at your wastegate and determine what kind of boost you're looking at. Now obviously you can't judge exactly how many PSI the turbo is going to be putting into your car from this, but it's important to just have a check and adjust it as necessary. I noticed it was on the maximum possible boost, which meant the wastegate arm was as tight as it would possibly go. For the safety of my engine, I decided to loosen this a little bit. I think I loosened it maybe three or four full turns just to ensure I wasn't over boosting my engine. Bolting the turbo to the manifold is a two person job. 
you're not going to be able to hold that turbo and get those nuts started by yourself. So make sure you've got a helping hand around. After that, it was time to hook the oil intake and sump return up to the turbo. Thank you. All right, so what I've actually ended up using for the oil return is this gasket goo. So the first one didn't work. We decided we'd punch a hole and I used Araldite around the thread, but that didn't seal. There were leaks everywhere. So I've used this gasket goo um, with nothing else and it's still setting a little bit, but some of it's gone pretty rock solid, which I'm really happy about. I'm gonna stop myself right there because when reattaching the pipe, this too snapped straight off. Instead, I decided to take the sump off and weld this fitting to the sump inside and out. Now this was a real bugger of a job. Getting the sump off is not easy at all. Sometimes you've got to do what's going to last the longest and be the best quality job. And now finally, the nice easy job of putting everything back together. To make these silicon hoses fit, I actually had to change the angle of the air box lid. This wasn't a big problem, some of the clips didn't grab quite like they used to because they weren't made for that spot, but it was pretty easy just to put a little bit of rubber hosing or fuel line on top to make them sit nice and firm. After capping the breather on the crossover pipe and filling the engine with oil again, I was just about ready to start it up. Be sure to tune in next time to hear many more turbo spools and watch the rest of my turbo conversion journey.